let's stand and sing our thankfulness to the Lord this morning. <clears throat> said, I want you to start thinking about all your blessings, and I want you to name them, and I want you to thank God for the blessings on you. She came back on Wednesday night, and he, she went up to him. He said, how you doing? She said, I'm mad at you. <laughs> and he said, why? She said, well, I took your advice. I went home, got in the bed, and I started to name my blessings and thanking God for my blessings. And she said it was 5 o'clock in the morning before I went to sleep. When I started <laughs> counting all my blessings, I had more than I could even name or number. Well, I think that's true for all of us today if we name and number all of our blessings. All right, the ushers are going to come, and we're going to, we're going to pray, and we're going to pray for one another. And then we're going to not only say we love him, but we're going to show our love. Let me just make these emphases this morning so you'll be aware of it I do need to make this announcement about uh, next Sunday uh, our uh, men and boys are going to start distributing Christmas cards yes right around the corner so they're going to have the boxes available and so if you want to pass out Christmas cards instead of paying the post office just sort of give the money to Lottie Moon a mission offering and, uh, and if you bring your cards and put them in a box available out in the vestibule We've got some young men that will take care of them, and they'll pass them out, and uh, they'll make sure they get to the right place. And all the money we collect for that 
we'll go to our Lottie Moon Christmas offering, and so I encourage you uh, to do that as well. The other announcements, we have moved our Wednesday evening service to Tuesday night uh, because of Thanksgiving, so we'll meet here on Tuesday night. There will be no choir practice today or Tuesday, so everybody remember that, and uh, then we'll come and we'll give thanks and we'll worship uh, this coming Tuesday night. The other items that are in there, the RAs and GAs, are still collecting items for the homeless shelter. Uh, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen? Amen. And uh, so this morning, Thanksgiving offering for our children's home. Uh, envelopes are in the pew. I hope you will take one of those and uh, you will put something in it. Don't just fill it out. Put something in it and then fill it out. And uh, then, uh, do you think we've got anything to be thankful for? Amen. Did you get a copy of the financial report in your bulletin this morning? Uh, did you get a copy of this in your bulletin this morning? Just, just thought I'd ask. Well, I'll tell you, this is not all of our financial blessings. This is not all of our blessings. But I want to tell you, these are the blessings of the Lord that he's provided for us uh, through his people. And so you get uh, a look at our financial statement and where we are financially uh, by on this one report. And so I encourage you to look it over. And when you do that, you got any questions, you feel free to ask. Uh, uh, we can explain everything that's on there. And uh, then when you look it over, uh, then uh, you ought to bow your head and thank God. Amen. 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 You ought to bow your head and give thanks to the Lord. Have a thank you card this morning. Thank you all so much for the prayers, the calls, the well wishes, the food that you sent our way. They were all so appreciated and meaningful. God bless all of you uh, for your love and support. This is from Gloria, and she's back here with us this morning, and we're glad she got to come to church this morning to be in our service today. Thank you. Pray for these on our prayer list. Please pray for Mr. Danny Robinson. Uh, got a call earlier this morning from Doris, and she had taken him to Grace Hospital this morning. Uh, she's had him to the doctor several times this week, and uh, they admitted him to the hospital at Grace this morning. And please remember him. Uh, pray for Miriam. I know that you do. We pray for others that are in our prayer list this morning and uh, needing your family as well, isn't it? Amen. This is a, uh, a cousin, your nephew, had been missing for some time and they located him yesterday and he had passed away. They found him 50-something uh, years of age and could not find him, but they found him yesterday and uh, here's a family grieving this morning. And so we pray for this family as well. Pray for the Elliott family uh, down in the cove. Had the funeral yesterday. And then two funerals tomorrow. Uh, that's connected with our church. People that we know. Uh, that's connected to our church. Reverend Bill Mitchell. Who passed away his funeral tomorrow. Butch Hogan funeral tomorrow as well, both of these funerals tomorrow. Please pray for these families, uh, if you will. You want to pray with us this morning. Father, we're glad that we serve a God that does hear and answer prayer. No matter what it is, we can bring our burdens to the Lord. We can bring our concerns, our heartaches, whatever they are, we can bring them to you. And thank you that, Lord, you care about every one of them. Pray you'll comfort the families this morning uh, that have lost their loved one uh, yesterday and then tomorrow. These families go through services. I pray that there be comfort given to them. And we thank you, Lord, that we're here this morning, that we can be with our family, we can be with our church family, and we can worship you. And we offer our praise and our thanksgiving to you this morning. We ask as we give that we will Give out of a heart of gratitude, a heart of love. Uh, because you love us, we are able to love you. And so, Father, we, we dedicate this offering to you as we give this morning. And I pray that it will all be used for the honor 
and the glory of God, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sing with us, if you will. <laughs> She couldn't talk very plain. And they were singing that song when they were singing, Count your blessings, name them one by one. And she sung it and said, Count your blessings, name them ton by ton. Well, I will assure you this morning, if you added up all your blessings, you'd have more than one this morning to give thanks to the Lord. Miss Miller, do you want to you want to come and share something with us this morning before the choir sings? And this is uh, again, we just want to uh, uh, special people in our in our midst this morning and she wants to share that with us mason get in here he's out there in the vestibule that's her grandson that's why i didn't talk to him like that send him on in here uh, Uh, I don't know if you don't know what his name is on there. I might be in trouble. 
stars in the sky for the flowers that bloom the ocean so blue thank you Lord for every sparrow that sings and makes sweet melody for the river that flows the rain and the snow thank you Lord and Amen. pray for the freedom I have today for your spirit. 
spirit I feel your presence so real thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord for everything you've done for me thank you Lord I just want to thank you Lord thank you Lord for making me whole saving my soul thank you Lord for being a friend so dear giving my sad heart cheer for holding my hand when I could not stand thank you Lord for giving your life for me on a cross at Calvary for taking my place mercy and grace thank you Lord thank you Lord just want to thank you Lord for everything you've done for me thank you Lord Saving my soul, thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Saving my soul, thank you, Lord. Got something to say thank you for? Amen. Amen. Our boys and girls are going to Children's Church now. They're over there. And while we stand together, you see somebody you need to shake hands with, smile at, greet, then do that. While they play, just stand up. Everybody's going to stand, and we're going to mix and mingle with one another. Speak to somebody, if you will.
We're looking at our Bibles this morning to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 39, if you will. You'll never, never lose anything by being thankful. In fact, you'll benefit from it. It'll be a blessing to you. It'll be a blessing to others. It'll be a benefit to God. I think it'll make all the difference in our life if we develop the attitude of gratitude. Are you going to be known for being a thankful person? I hate to tell you that we all have memories of people in our life that the only memory we have of them that they were always complaining about something. They were not thankful. They were not grateful, but they were always they could always find something uh, to complain about. Well, I assure you, you'll not be a happy person if you spend all your time uh, searching for things to complain about rather than the things you ought to be thankful for. If there's a man in the Bible that had every reason to complain it would be Joseph in the book of Genesis this man everything seemed to be going against him jealous by his brothers sold into slavery was a servant in a house was lied about cast into prison, everything you can imagine that could go wrong in a person's life, you'd add all of the things up in the life of Joseph. And you would think every time you hear him speaking, he'd be complaining about his lot in life. You'd think you'd hear him talking how bad he'd had it, how good other people had, and he'd never be thankful. But the text I'm going to read you this morning comes out of his mouth, and he is not in a good situation. And uh, he's serving his master in the house, and the master has a wife, and the wife comes to Joseph. Apparently he was a handsome young man. And she came and tried to entice him uh, to lie with her. And the only thing that Joseph had, the only weapon that he had when he was a slave in the house and there his master and his wife had rule over him. And her desire was to ruin him. And the only weapon that he had was a thankful heart. Was a grateful attitude. And it's out of the life of Joseph that we learn a little bit in two verses about the power of thanksgiving. How powerful a thankful heart is. In Genesis 39, verse 7, it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused, and said unto his master's wife, Don't you listen to what he said. Behold, my master wanteth not what is with me in the house. He hath committed all that he hath to my hand. 
There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against my God? Thanksgiving for what he was and thankful for what he had was the power that he used to find victory in this situation. You know that thanksgiving never ever stands by itself. This matter of giving thanks is just not an isolated thing. If you give thanks, then you've got to express that thanksgiving some way uh, in our praise unto God. Thanksgiving is linked to joy. If you have joy in your heart, then thanksgiving will come out your mouth. Grace, I'll tell you that is linked to our thanksgiving. But on the other hand, if we're not thankful, do you know what we'll do? There will be bitterness, there will be complaining, there will be all kinds of issues that will arise in our mind and in our heart. And I'm here to tell you this morning, the cure for it all is to be filled with a thankful heart. If your heart is full of thanksgiving to the Lord, then you don't have any other room for complaining or uh, bitterness, any other of those negative attitudes that come our way. Uh, thanksgiving and the truth I want to talk about this morning are the benefits of our thanksgiving unto God. In this simple little episode in the life of Joseph, there are three things I'd like to point out about how you will benefit by being thankful. I don't need to tell you this morning, you will not lose anything. I mean, you're not, you're not going to come up empty if you are a thankful person. Uh, you, you will benefit from that if you learn how to give thanks and develop this attitude of gratitude. Now, how many people you know got that attitude in our day? I want to tell you, all we hear every day and turn on the TV and everywhere you turn, all you hear is this group and that group and the other group complaining. Could I say this morning as a child of God, I got more to be thankful for than I have to complain about this morning. And here is Joseph. Oh, if anybody had a, had a reason to complain and to be bitter, it would be this man. He could have been bitter at this family. He could have been bitter at all his circumstances. But right in the middle of all of this going on around him, he learned to give thanks unto God. The Bible said when he was faced with this, he said, I will say no to this temptation. For my master, he knows what is in me, he said. He knows what is in my heart. And do I need to remind you this morning, God already knows what's in our heart today. I mean, real thanksgiving. And what you do on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, you come down here and offer a few words of thanks to God. I want to tell you, God knows if your heart is full of thanksgiving and grateful this morning. And Joseph said, well, my master knows what's within me. He knows what I'm like. He's committed all of this unto me. He's put this whole household into my hand. He knows there is none greater in this house than I. He has not kept anything back from me except you. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against my God? I want to say three things about Joseph. When we learn the truth about thanksgiving, real thanksgiving, what did Joseph do? Number one, if I am a thankful person, if my heart is full of praise, if my life is filled with gratitude, number one, it will keep me focused. Joseph, nobody else was around, 
but him and Potiphar's wife. And she said, why, nobody will know about this. Nobody will learn about this. And uh, this is all I'm asking you to do. But Joseph kept his focus on his master. Joseph said, why, do you know what your, my, my master has done? Are you aware that everything he's done for me, how that he has taken care of me, he has provided for my needs here in this house, he has given me a position in this house. Do you know what my master has done for me? Can I say to you this morning, if you want to really, really have a thankful spirit, you just stay focused on who God is and what God has done for you. Now, a lot of people cannot be thankful this morning because they're living in the past. And they're thinking about all the bad things that have happened to them in the past. And they're living back there somewhere where somebody mistreated them or where they were, had been done wrong. Well, I'm just telling you, you can live there if you want to. I mean, you can make a choice to go back and live in the past of all of the mess that's gone on in the past. I, I confess to you this morning, when I looked around from the choir you know what I saw? All human beings sitting out here. I mean from the choir all the way to the back of the church. We're all just humans and we're all sinners saved by the grace of God. And I'll tell you, if the devil had his way this morning, he'd like for us to come right in here and sit down and talk about how bad things are and how miserable we are and get our focus on all the complaints and all the things in our life. Oh, brother, I'm going to tell you, I want to stay focused on the Lord and the goodness of God and the grace of God. I want to be like the lady. She has a worry wart. You country folks, you know what a worry wart is, don't you? I'm not talking over your head. Worry warts, you know what worry warts are? They worry, worry, they worry, they worry about everything. And if there's nothing to worry about, they'll create things to worry about. And they just worry they couldn't live, they couldn't make it a day without worrying. Well, there, there was a church member uh, that was like that. Surprise, surprise, folks like that end up in church. And they sit on our Baptist pews. Amen? They just don't sit there and look at me like, oh, less than preacher, we don't got none like that. Oh, yeah, we're human. And she is sitting at church, and the preacher preached, and she sort of got bothered by it. And uh, he said, you need to go home, and uh, you need to pray about these things you worry about. Well, she sat there all sour look on her face every Sunday. Uh, <laughs> uh, do I need to say any more about that? And she went home, she got to pray, and she said, I think I'll... Finally do what the preacher said. She went home and got to pray and the Lord said to her, said, what you're worrying about? Why are you worrying about that? Why don't you just turn those, all those problems and those worries over to me? And she came to church the next Sunday and brother, she is smiling and grinning and just as happy. And the preacher, you know, he's shocked when he saw her and he said, what happened to you? She said, I, I took your advice. I went home, got to bed, started praying and I was complaining to the Lord about some people and about some things. And the Lord said to me, you've got two options. You can stay up and worry about this all night or you can give it to me and I'll handle it. She said, I decided I'd just give it to him. And I went over and went to sleep and let the Lord take care of it. Can I say to you this morning, all these things we worry about and complain about, why don't you just turn them over to the Lord and get a good night's sleep and enjoy living life every day. No need for God to stay awake and you stay awake too. And he never slumbers and he never sleeps. So it's be a good idea. Just take all your worries and give them to him. Got to stay focused. Do you know that word thanks is an old English word that means to think. 
That's the meaning of that word to think. Uh, thinking people are thankful people. If you think about the right thing. If your focus is on the right thing. Here's a beautiful woman standing before Joseph. And she said to Joseph, uh, nobody will know about this. And Joseph kept his eyes and his mind on his master. How good he had been to him. How good he had taken care of him. Can I ask you this morning, if you really want to live a thankful life, just keep your mind focused on how good God has been to you, how gracious God has been to you. God has not withheld anything good from you. In fact, God has been good to all of us, has he not? He's been better to us than we've been to him. Joseph, here's the truth about being a thankful person. You must keep your focus on the Lord. Here's the second truth out of the life of Joseph. Joseph not only kept his focus on the Lord, but he also kept himself faithful to God. Now she comes and says to this young man, nobody will know about this and it's okay for you to do this. But he, verse 8 says, refused and said to his master's wife, my master, this is your husband, he has not withheld anything from me in this house. He has committed all that he hath into my hand. Could I tell you God hadn't kept anything from you this morning? God has been what to us? Good? Has God been good? Do we deserve all the goodness of God this morning? Even when I've been unfaithful to God, God has been faithful to me. He reminded himself that God was faithful to him. And the reason he knew that, he said, I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking about how faithful my master has been to me. Could you add up all your benefits this morning? I'm just, I'm telling you right here, can you add up all the good things you've got in your life that God's been faithful to you? Uh, I'll ask again. <laughs> Do you know all the good things God's given to you? How many of you had a good bed to sleep in last night? Well, I'll just say, how many had a bed to sleep in? I don't know if yours is good or not. Maybe you're going to get you a new one for Christmas. I don't know. You had a bed to sleep in? Had a roof over your head? You had food on the table? Are you going to have some food on the table when you leave here? I didn't see anybody walking down here to church this morning. Everybody had a ride down here, didn't we? And all of us got clothes on our back. Had all the necessities we need in life. But I'm going to tell you, I got more to be thankful for. Had to give praise unto God. I promise you, being a thankful person, I keep a lot of bad things out of your heart. Joseph said, I've been a thinking, and I am now thankful. Because I was a slave, I was hated by my family, they sold me as a slave. And they told my daddy that they'd kill me, that I was dead, and sent me off into a foreign country. I, I live like a slave. They cast me in prison. And out of all of that, 
Joseph said, I've been a thinking. <laughs> and I found something to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. You, do you know, what the, you know what the Bible says? One of the traits, one of the characteristics of the last days found over there in the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 22, 21 and 21, 22, what the scripture said about the sign of the last days. Listen to it. I just put it up there. Listen. Because that when they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God. Neither were thankful. We do not glorify God as God when we don't give thanks. I just remind you again, do you think we're living in a generation of unthankful people? Have we raised a generation of people that's unthankful? We have raised a generation of some who thinks everybody owes them a life, everybody owes them a living, everybody owes them everything. They, don't, they should not sacrifice for anything. They don't want to work for anything. Oh, Lord, don't get me talking about that. I mean, that's a four-letter word to this younger generation. Work. I mean, that's almost like a cuss word to them. If you're talking about that, I'm talking to people here this morning, raised to do that. All your life you thought, man, there's value in working. You're not really thankful until you earn it. <laughs> and you learn how to be thankful for it. A lot of us like that prodigal son. He got talking to himself one day. You better be careful when you start talking to yourself. Somebody said, I don't, I don't talk to a smart person, so I thought I'd talk to myself one day. Uh, well, I'm not so sure about that. That young prodigal son, he started talking to himself. He said, I deserve better than this. He lived like a lot of young people this day. Give me what is mine. I deserve it. His father gave it to him. And he goes out and spends it all in a far country. But there came a day when the Bible said he came to himself. And he started talking to himself again. Self, he said, look where I am. Look what a mess you made out of it. I think this is what I'm going to do. It's better to Father's house than it is where I am. And I'll go back up to my daddy's house and I'll ask him to forgive me. And I'll tell him I'm not even worthy to be his son. Just make me one of your hired servants. I sort of think his heart sort of got in the right place, don't you? And he said, I wasn't grateful for it the first time. But if I get back to my father's house, I'll sure be thankful just living outside in a servant's house and just eating a little bit of crumbs off the table. I'd say he's thankful. I'd say he's grateful. Paul and Silas put into prison. Blood running out of their back and the Bible said at midnight they sang praises unto God and they gave thanks unto the Lord. And this same apostle when he wrote the New Testament 27 times he says to his believers rejoice and be thankful. How can you do that? You got to remain faithful. You've got to stay focused and remain faithful. And thirdly, if I live with a grateful heart, it will keep me free. Do you know that if you have a thankful heart and a thankful spirit, you can't put that in a prison? 
I'm going to tell you, your body may be in a prison, but your soul can be free and thankful unto God. You cannot put a thankful person down. You can criticize him. You can do everything you want to. But in his heart there is a thanksgiving spirit. Your body may be somewhere. Your body may be sick. But in your soul and in your heart there is a thankful spirit in you. Somebody says you can thank your way out of everything. (laughs) Hmm. This man, if anybody... And they looked at him. They said, Joseph, you're not free. Do you, know, do you know you're a slave? Do you know you don't belong to yourself? Do you know, Joseph, that you, you've got a master over you? You're in bondage? Joseph said, but you're not looking at the real me. For you're looking at my body. But my soul and my spirit is free. Brother, I'm going to tell you when the Lord sets you free. You are free indeed. In everything that happened to Joseph. All the bad things that happened to him. Joseph said, my spirit is free. Some of us in this building this morning are bound by all the other people in our life, all the bad things going on in the world. All, all, I could go down the list. Do you know we all live in the same world? Do you, are you aware we all live in the same circumstances? <laughs> we all live in all that. Well, how you come to church and praise God? Because... I stay focused on him and I want to remain faithful to him and hallelujah down inside me there's a spirit and there's a soul that is free, set free by the Lord that is not bound by all the things of this world. Have you, have you, have you tried just giving thanks? You say, oh, I've tried complaining. How, how, where'd that get you? How far'd that get you? <laughs> You do know that after a while you'll run out of people to complain to because they get tired of hearing it. Anybody here left to hear complain? I didn't see a hand go up. If, if you raised your hand, I was going to stop and give an invitation right then. I invite you to come down here and pray. We'll all come down here and pour all our complaints on you. None of us want to live that way. After a while, you run out of people to complain to. It is amazing. I talk to people. Uh, Lord, help me not to not to expose the guilty. Uh, but uh, you do you do know that. Our complaining about things doesn't make it better. Are you aware of that? Have you learned that? Can I suggest to you this morning, why not just stop and give thanks? Why not try Thanksgiving? Just practice this attitude of gratitude. When Jesus came upon them, seen in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, he had uh, thousands of people out there that were hungry. I can't imagine, I'm just knowing human nature. Do you think there's a lot of complaining going on in that crowd? Don't, don't drop your head and don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. This ain't time to be reading your Bible. You look up here at me. I'm going to tell you when things don't go our way. Jesus had a crowd of about three to 5,000 people standing out there and all them hungry and had just a little boy that had a few fish and a few barley loaves and... Uh, <laughs>
I can hear them. I can hear them complaining, can't you? I just cannot believe. I can almost hear some of you complaining. That, what is that noise going on in his pocket? Don't ask me. You ask the folks back there in the back. I'll put it up here so it won't make a noise. Close to my heart. <laughs> And after all that complaining, all of this saying, what we're going to eat, you brought us out here to kill us, and all this stuff, you know. You, you, brought, you did all this, blame it on disciples. And Jesus said, I'll tell you what you do. Find that little boy that's got a few fish and a few barley loaves, and just bring them and give them to me. And I'll summarize what he did after they all sat down, and the disciples, I can imagine, oh, Lord, this is going to be a disaster. You know, this, this is not going to work. They had to be Baptist, you know. This just will not work. And Jesus took that little handful and he lifted it up to his father and he prayed. And out of all the things he prayed, the Bible said he gave thanks for what he had. It wasn't a lot in the eyes of others, but Jesus gave thanks for it. I ask you this morning, how thankful are you? I love that watching Jesus handle difficult situations. John 11, you're talking about bad. Here's his two friends. They take him to a grave. And their brother is already dead. And they said, Jesus, after they'd complained a little while, read it, read in John chapter 11. All they could do is complain. He wasn't there. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. They just complained and complained. Jesus goes to the grave, and the first thing he did, well, he wept with them. And then Jesus, the Bible said, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he began to thank God. What an odd place to give thanks in a grave. If you've got faith in the resurrection and the life, I want to tell you through your tears, you can always praise God for something. He thanked God for what was about to happen. That I encourage you this morning to develop this truth about being a thankful person. You've got to stay focused. You've got to remain faithful to God. And thirdly, you'll be free. You'll be free. And while everybody around you is complaining, you are thankful. If I did a survey this morning, I'd say, how many people in this building would rather be around somebody that's always thankful for things than somebody that's always got something to complain about? I know what the survey would show. I had a dear rain in South Carolina. sad part about it she was a preacher's wife <laughs> ask anybody in her family ask her children ask her grandchildren ask anybody she went to church with you could not talk to her for five minutes she did not want to hear what you had to say But can I tell you about the problem I had last week? <laughs> can I tell you the problem my children and my grandkids? Can I tell you about this church member could have just gone and talk about? And it was I, all her life, I never, ever remember. I never, ever remember her saying, but I've got so much to be thankful for. Now, I want to make a memory with somebody, but I sure don't want it, want it to be that they say, well, you know, all that person does is complain all the time. Are you listening to me this morning? Do you hear?
I, I just share this. Since I have been around preachers all my life and I've stayed in the home of preachers all over this state and I've lived with them in a weekend revival and just stayed in their houses, brother, it doesn't take you long, it doesn't take you long to find out. Is this, is this family thankful? Do they live a life of thanksgiving to God? Maybe it has to be with me being there. They just want to, they just want to pour their complaint out on me. I'm supposed to go to church at night and preach and encourage everybody, and here they are dumping all their troubles and all their worries and all their complaints on me. Do you know what I'm talking about? You, you, you know anybody like that? Do you know anybody like that? Do you know anybody like that? Don't be afraid to shake your head. You know anybody like that? Oh, we all got people like that in our family, haven't we? Miss Gloria is here this morning. And if you, think, if you think I'm not really telling you the truth, you ask her. Because when her and Mr. Ray came in to pastor down in the lower part of the state, and she will identify with this. And the reason I know, because I was there every year preaching revival, trying to help, try, and I thought maybe I was there trying to help the preacher's wife more than I was there to help anybody else. And uh, Miss Gloria knows about this. I preached every night. She sat right on the front row. I don't know whether this had anything to do with it or not. Bright red hair. Right, Gloria? I just said she had some red hair up here, but boy, she had some fire inside her too. And I would preach. And when I gave an invitation, and I'd ask everybody to please bow their head, you know what she did? She stood right up and she turned right around and then she started looking people in the face. And I thought, oh Lord, this woman thinks she's God. <laughs> and I said again, please bow your head in reverence to the Lord. We're going to pray and maybe if you've got a need you'd like to do. Brother, she, she wanted to stare them down. And I said, okay. I got the wonderful privilege of living with them for a week. <laughs> and we went to the parsonage. And we had no sooner got in the door that she started. Did you know old so-and-so was there tonight? You preached to them and they stood back there and wouldn't make a move. Wouldn't surprise me if God didn't strike them dead in the pew where they were. I said, oh, Lord. And that happened every night. Every night I preached. Brother, she stood up there. I thought, well, maybe I need to turn the service over to you. Let you be God. Let you be the judge. About the middle of the week, I tried to let up on them a little bit and try to be a little compassion. I want to pour a little, little oil in, in their wounds. It's five nights in a row we did that. Never one time did she ever say, Lord, it could be me. Maybe I need to get a new attitude. Oh, no, it's everybody else. I went back the next year. There she sat. Right on that front row. I preach she'd come to the parsonage. Do you know? Did you see them there tonight? I said, could you point me to where my bedroom is so I can go in there and close the door and not hear any of this? But it was night after night after night after night. And year after year after year, the same thing. 
Not one word of gratitude. I wouldn't get in the door and she'd say to me, what are you preaching tomorrow night? I said, when God tells me, I'll be sure to tell you. And he may not tell me that I get in the pulpit. I did lie a little bit about that because I wasn't going to tell her. <laughs> you know what I thought? I thought, man, she wants to tell me what to preach so bad she couldn't hardly stand it. But all the years that I went there, and it was many, she had such developed this critical complaining spirit that not one time was she ever thankful and grateful that she is even there, that she got the privilege to be a child of God and she got the privilege of being a pastor's wife. It was like a breath of fresh air when Ray and Gloria came along. <laughs> and you know Miss Gloria. <laughs> and you know Miriam. But I want to tell you this morning, i just come to tell you, we got more to be thankful for than we have to complain about. I want to develop an attitude of gratitude. I had no intention of saying what I said at the end of this service this morning. But I feel it in my heart. I needed to say that. How it is possible that sometimes we do it so much we just don't even know we're doing it. And we just every day look at everything negative. And with a complaint, that won't get you anywhere. It won't help anybody else. And it sure will not glorify God in your life. Would you stand with me this morning? Thank you for being so attentive and faithful this morning as we worship the Lord. I pray we'll be like Joseph. We'll stay focused. We'll remain faithful to our God. Faithful to our church. A lot of, a lot of people say, well, I find so much wrong with the church, I won't be faithful there. Well, I just want to tell you, I haven't found any perfect in all of my years of ministry, never found anybody, any place perfect. I just want to remain faithful. Through all this experience we're going through, I, I plan on being faithful. I want to be faithful to the Lord. I want to be faithful to His church. I want to be faithful to His people. I've determined that that's what I want to do by the help of God. Boy, does that set you free. Set you free. Lord, I pray you'll take our words this morning. May they be your words. Help us to realize there is great profit. There is great benefit of being a thankful person. It'll, been our, it'll benefit us, our own life. It'll benefit our friends, others around us. They'll find us being thankful. It'll bless God. It'll give glory to God. It'll say to others, God has been so good to me. I have no complaints about him. I want to praise him. I want to honor him. Lord, help us to be reminded of those three things. That when we're tempted, as Joseph was, to forget about all that the master had done for him, he'd be focused on what he had given him. And he'd remain faithful to him. And then he is free. Free to serve his master. I pray we'll go in the strength of this message today. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing just a, about just a chorus we want to sing together. You want to sing something there? We'll sing it and then we'll be dismissed this morning. And uh, I, know, I know everything's going on this afternoon. I know what's going on up there. I'm aware of that. I live in the same world you do. <laughs> you pray for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be at the hospital in Morganton this afternoon with Doris.
pray. Pray for him. Pray for this need. We're singing it together. When we walk with the Lord, you happy I'm going to get these kids one Sunday they're going to sing if you're happy and you know it then your face will surely show it <laughs> uh, you don't want me singing that I'll get them up here I'll blame it on them one Sunday when they sing that Lord, they're going to play you smile at somebody this morning you got it good I tell you you ought to thank God for it you smile at somebody tell them you're glad to see you 